Buonasera everybody and hello from Ragusa, Sicily. I am here today with a special guest. You didn't know I was having a special guest for Sicily Q&A, but my special guest today is my friend Juicy Coppola. Welcome, hello. Hello, <laughs> hello everybody. Thank you. Thank you Sarah for the introduction and yes, we are here from this beautiful city. So Juicy is a new guide working uh, for us doing tours. She's going to be doing our, our Sicily tours next year. And I'm super excited to have her because she's a native to Sicily. She lives in Palermo. She has been a teacher and a guide in the past. And we've kind of dragged her out of guide retirement. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a good friend, or I'm sorry, she's the sister of a good friend of mine. And uh, we're really super happy to have her. We had her last year. And believe it or not, the people who went on the tour with her last year get this, they liked her better than me. <laughs> no, that's not true. It's they, true. They like me, but it's no, true. not better than, no, nobody <laughs> could be better than Sarah, nobody. <laughs> so you, Guaranteed. you are in very good hands if you travel with Juicy. So I thought it'd be fun to have her here today to answer some of your questions. If you do have questions uh, and you're watching today, you can put any questions into the comments section and those are gonna pop up on our screen so we can see questions live. Otherwise, we're gonna go to the questions that were submitted uh, to our, by our followers. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick off with my friend Susan Brown. Uh, her question, yeah, she asks, if we were to do um, a holiday where she's in, coming in March and she's gonna stay um, three nights in three or four different places, where would you go for, in March, three or four different places for three nights each? So yeah. I have an idea, what do you think? What's your, what's yeah. your suggestion? I would, I would suggest the three uh, parts of Sicily. So Northwest, Trapani, Northeast, or Northeast Palermo, which is not really northeast, but it's in the northeastern coast, and south Syracuse. Um, so this way you have a complete idea of the island, three different cities with three different uh, provinces, and uh, but you have a complete idea of, um, of the island and see a lot. There's a lot to see. It's a really smart way to do Sicily if you don't plan to rent a car also, to find home bases that you decide to... Um, to kind of stay and then explore the area. So that's really smart um, to kind of do those. So yeah, I would say three, yeah, I would do Palermo. You could do Tarmina, you could do Syracuse. Yeah. Um, you might do Agrigento, although you can do Agrigento in the Valley of the Temples as a day trip from yeah. Palermo. It's on the way, going yeah. towards east, you can stop or going towards south because Agrigento is right on the way. So yeah, that's easy to, to stop and uh, Yeah, and so trip. kind of the critical things you want to hit on a trip in Sicily, I think are Palermo, Agrigento, Siracusa. Those are the three most important. Yeah. And then if you can add Catania or um, Taromina, which do you like better, Catania or Taromina? Well, they're different. Yeah. Catania is a big city, Taromina is the gem of, yeah. <laughs> of Sicily. That's the number one destination for, for tourism. Although it's not, I mean, it's not the most beautiful, but it's the most, um, it's the biggest attraction. It, it is beautiful. So two different things, yeah. depending on how you feel and what you want to see. Yeah. Um, so next question we have from uh, our viewers, which is just a general question uh, that we received by email is, what is the best time to go to Sicily? And that's a fantastic question because there's a lot of ways to answer that question depending on what you want. So my favorite time of year, if you're asking me, I like March. Uh, I like now because mm -hmm. this is when the weather's warm enough. I like kind of September, early September, not all of September is good. Uh, and you can even be here all the way until the end of October. I'm a swimmer, I'm a beach person, so I'm always looking for when the water is warm. So the water in the Mediterranean is warm from about now until 1st of November. Mm -hmm. You want to skip Ferragosto. Yeah because that's the most uh, crowded time, so that's August, so just yeah. skip all of August. What's your I, favorite? Yeah, I would skip, I agree totally with you, I, I would skip August, the whole month of August, because it's really hot, sometimes even half, the second half of July is very hot. Huh? And other than that, the whole year round, basically, because it's, uh, even winters are not cold, and um, it never snows, it, it does rain, but it's never, cold, really cold. I mean, you don't need hats or gloves. We need a coat, yeah. but it's not that cold. So obviously you can't swim in the winter, but depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for good weather, obviously spring is the best. And as Sarah said, September, early September, 
June is the best time of the year. And I would say also think of Easter. Easter is a beautiful time to come to Sicily because there are many things going on. There are, are festivals, Easter festivals. Every little tiny village has a festival for Easter. Yeah. And uh, so it's a big thing. And there's, there's a lot to do. Yeah, and if you're interested in, in doing like a big Easter and you, you don't mind being away, uh, they take a lot of their traditions from the, the Spanish, so they have all the processions. Oh, yes, and the pat parade, yes, yes. Yeah, it's it's kind of mid misteri called with, the, um, with these big ceremonies and long, and they, they some of them last whole, all night long, yep. even until 2, 3 a.m., and some of them are very... Um, touching also because they are like 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 acting in the streets so it's really nice yes that's a that's a really good idea so that's uh i i think we didn't give you a specific answer <laughs> but it would depend i would say like if you don't want heat you don't want crowds you want to be here by yourself anytime from november until i would say first of march you're going to have sicily to yourself but you'll need to bring warm clothes but yeah it's good it if you want to swim, June yeah. or September. That's, uh, I would say, if we want to be more specific. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are perfect times to come. So you've got some some choices. Um, we always try to offer these tours in the best moment. So Juicy, for example, is going to be doing the tours next year in the fall, in September, because that's kind of the perfect time you can swim. Uh, you've got really nice weather, and and Sicily doesn't have as much of a over tourism problem as the rest of Italy because like I would not send you to Rome at the beginning of September mm -hmm. but Sicily is actually okay um, so yeah so um, yeah when we're offering our tours because we have a really good idea about when you should go uh, so next question um, can you recommend a hotel in Catania yes yes we can so there's a few different options um, I would say the one that is the most centrally located, even if it's kind of a, just a chain hotel, I like the Una Palace Hotel, which is on Via Etnea. I like it just because it's right in the middle of that main drag, and that's a very cool place to be. There's also a couple of places that are around the Cathedral Square. The problem with Catania is you have to be a little bit careful about what part of town you're in. Um, the other one that is quite interesting if you like really modern kind of bougie hotels, there's one called Habitat that's over by Teatro Bellini that is very cool. It's a very cool hotel. Uh, the nice thing about Catania is the hotels in general are extremely inexpensive, so you can have a really nice hotel for a pretty good price. Um, there are lots of fun little B&Bs, um, so the areas I'd be, say, I'd be looking at if I were you, stick to Via Etnea. Yeah from Piazza Stesicoro to Piazza Duomo and just stay in that zone. I wouldn't recommend going outside of that. Yeah, I, I agree. And there are very nice BMBs in the center in Via Etnea. Yeah. Very old palaces that have been turned into, into BMBs with um, beautiful furniture, and beautiful views also with the terraces and you can have breakfast at the terrace. Yeah. Um, and these old palaces, nice places. Yeah, and really, like, uh, you can have a pretty cool place for cheap. But I think the most important thing in, in Catania is just where you're at. Really do stick to that area. I would avoid the Castello Orsino area, for sure. Yeah. I would avoid anything that's past the Bellini Gardens, because that's a little outside of the center. So, Via Etnea, just stick, stick to Via Etnea. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so is there a company that you would recommend for day trips to Mount Etna from Taormina, including 4x4 and cable car to go up and lunch at a vineyard? Now there's a ton of different options here. Uh, the one off the top of my head, I have two options. One would be Etna Wine School, my friend Ben Spencer. If you really want to do an, a wine experience that talks a lot about, focuses more on wine education and understanding the wines of Etna. He's incredible, really good company, and he can hook you up with a lot of the other pieces depending on how you want to do it. The really easy, cheap and cheery one, yeah, there's a bus company called Sat, and they offer all kinds of day excursions from Taramina. And in fact, the people who are asking, where should I home base, you could stay in Taramina the whole time and just take a different oh, yes. excursion. That's easy. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, right. And let me add something to, to the options that you have um, mentioned. That 
regarding Etna. Yeah. There, is, um, there are two associations of volcanologists who offer also day trips to Etna. That's more like if you really want to do a more specific hiking, let's say, of the Etna, because they explain, they, they take you to the craters and they explain all the um, naturalistic, let's say, uh, changes and, and a view. So it depends on what you want to do, but there's a big, big s choice. Yeah, there's yeah. a big choice. So this company I was mentioning, Sap, uh, these are this is these are friends of mine. I know them. You don't even have to book ahead. If you do, you often incur a lot of extra expenses. You can just walk into their office. They're on Via Umberto, and you can book um, any excursion in the moment. You can even go to the Aeolian Islands from there, which mm -hmm. is pretty neato that you can go all the yeah, way. Yeah, that's another. By the way, uh, I would avoid the Aeolian Islands in March. Yes. Because of the sea. <laughs> that reminds me of <laughs> yeah. um, the Olean Islands in March. No, I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, so we have something, what is it, like 120 islands around Sicily? Yeah. There's tons of islands, and the most uh, popular ones are the Aeolian Islands, Stromboli, Volcanos, Canarea, Liberi, Salina. They're super beautiful, and you could spend a lot of time there, but yeah, they're not great. Yeah off season. No, they're not great because of the sea. The sea is very rough, so you risk, you plan your trip to see the, the islands, but you never get to see them actually because it's impossible to, to, to reach them. Yeah, so that should really just be a yeah. warm weather option. Yes. I would say the, the from islands April on, from April, April, yeah. April on. Yeah, maybe to the, even to the end of November. And the uh, Egadi yes. Islands, kind of similar, yeah. not so fun off season because that I've been on that boat when it's the winter and it's raining and it's it's not yeah. great. Yeah, so those are some good options there. Okay, so kind of similar um, question, a lot of questions about when to go. Somebody is uh, planning on spending December in Sicily. So, Juicy, what would you say to somebody who's spending December here? December in Sicily, um, as I said, it doesn't snow. So, if you're looking for snow, you could still go to Mount Etna. It, there is a ski resort, so that, that could be an option. That's skiing with a beautiful landscape of the sea, and that's something different. So, that could be something. Otherwise, uh, some, some sightseeing is al always available, because all year round, Sicily is welcoming. Uh, obviously, you, the only thing you can't do is go to the to the sea, so you can't swim. But everything is available. It's not crowded, obviously, this, in the winter, and um, there are celebrations. <clears throat> Christmas is a big celebration, not as much as Easter, but there are big celebrations going on. So yes, I would recommend it. There are um, opera houses that you could visit, and there are big concerts, nice concerts that could be attracting, you know, attractions for, for those who, are, who love music. Um, but everything, yes, you can mainly do anything in the yeah. winter. Everything, whatever you could do in the summer, you do in the winter, except for swimming. The other thing I would say mm -hmm. is you can't really do farmhouses, like agritreesme. Yeah. <coughs> like there's um, a lot of them that aren't even open mm -hmm. in the winter time. So you might want to, um, to just choose to stay in cities. I would probably just stick to yeah. like Palermo, Catania. Even Taramina is mm -hmm. pretty quiet. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit quiet in the winter, yeah. yes. I mean, it's not during the the festivities, but it would be in between. Like the, I would say, if, if you went during the um, Christmas time, then it's crowded because there are shops, but if you go in December, the beginning of December or late January, it would be kind of isolated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that would, that would be a good time to go. Um, okay, uh, so a few other questions that people um, have asked me about Sicily is where is the best beach? in Sicily? Mmm, that's that, a tough one. That's a question that you cannot ask. <laughs> <laughs> like, where is the best arancina in town? <laughs> no, you can't ask that question. Everybody has it, <laughs> its own, yeah. right? Their own beach, their own arancina, their own best pasta, whatever. So th those are questions that are very personal. There are beautiful beaches. I could say the best beaches are in the south, that for sure. It, they are in the south of the island, south east of the island, so all the, um, the part that goes from Agrigento to Siracusa, that's the part of the island where you will find the most isolated beaches and the uh, white sands. But 
every part has beautiful beaches. Yeah. So um, there's not like one in particular. Yeah, and I would also note that like a lot of the famous places to go to the beach, like Taramina is a famous place to go to the mm -hmm. beach, the beach there is all rocks. So it, I think it's a little disappointing to people sometimes, and if this is just an Italy-wide thing, yeah. that a lot of the beaches in Italy have little stones instead of sand. They still put yeah. out the beach chairs and it's fine, yeah. but you need to wear water shoes. Yes. And so the sandy beaches, so yeah. that I can think, so the whole south coast, yes, yeah, she's right about that, and then Cefalu, Cefalu is a beautiful beach. Mm, is a beautiful beach, yeah. right? Cefalu, but also uh, the Gulf, the beaches around the Gulf of, Castellammare, oh, which is yeah. the biggest gulf after the Gulf of Genoa. It's in Sicily. All the, all the beaches around that gulf are nice and sandy. They're golden and some parts are white and some... <clears throat> so that, I would say, that area. So from Palermo heading to Trapani, there are also nice beaches. And that actually reminds me of another question that we received, which is, where is a good off the beaten path place to go in Sicily? And that is where I would recommend is Castellamare del Golfo, Scopello, oh, yes. Zingaro. It's all the same area, kind of between Palermo and mm -hmm. Trapani. Uh, is there a particular place there you like the best? Uh, Scopello. Scopello. <laughs> Scopello. <laughs> me too. That's my, that's my favorite place. Yes, well, it's, it's a reserve, it's a natural reserve. There are several natural reserves in Sicily, but that one in particular is, um, is particularly interesting because of the depth of the water. So the depth of the water makes, makes the, the, the sea itself saltier and the, the fish is even tastier and the colors are different from any other part of Sicily because of the because of the, of the depth of the water and the, the, the wild uh, vegetation that is underwater. So that makes it, yes, I would say that you can't miss that. Yeah, and by the way, you do need a car if you want to do something oh, yes. like this because, um, and that, that's something important to know about transportation around the island. The train system is not the best, <laughs> um, the bus system, eh, not the best. So you're best off either going on a tour, like we offer, or um, renting a car. Renting a car, yeah. What do, you, do you have any thoughts for people renting a car? Any tips? Since you have lived in the U.S. also. Yes. I would, well, if you, if you want to rent a car, I would suggest to do it online before you come here. Because yeah. um, I know that it's easier and it's cheaper. Once you get here, the agency charge more than what you would pay um, online. So. That's my advice. If you if you ever if you decide to rent a car, do it before you come. It's easy because all the airports have rented cars, so you just get off the airport and take the, the car. And that's actually a really good tip right there is that don't rent from a town. Yeah. And uh, the reason is you, most of those rental agencies are in the middle of these towns with these narrow little streets, and if you're not used to driving here, you're not going to enjoy trying to drive that car out of that town. So if you're at the airport, airports are usually right on the autostrada. It's very easy just to jump on and go about your merry way. I also would highly recommend not driving into any big cities. Yikes, like Palermo. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, if you're not familiar with uh, Italian driving, it could be kind of a culture culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> and Sicilian driving is, is Italian driving on steroids. <laughs> yeah. As I said. Uh... However, however, I would say Sicily is one of the most pleasant places to drive, actually, because it's not super duper busy. I mean, it's like the autostrada in the A1 in Italy, in mainland Italy, is not anything like the main autostrada here. It's a lot less scary. Oh, yes. oh yeah, from one city to the other, there are beautiful drives. I mean, you can you can drive through, I'm thinking of Palermo, Sciacca. If you go through uh, the Palermo, Sciacca, you get beautiful views. It's wonderful. But the cities, yes, uh, as Sarah's saying, it's, it's a bit challenging to drive in the city. Little, little hair raising. And I don't recommend renting a Vespa, by the way. I know Americans see people in social media renting. I mean, I, I've done it too. I've rented Vespas, but I own one. Like, I drive one at home. Please don't come here and rent a Vespa if you've never been on a scooter before, because then you're going to get to see the inside of the yeah. Sicilian hospital system, and nobody, <laughs> nobody wants that. No, no, we don't want that. <laughs> 
So another question we received is, what is the best way to get to Sicily from Italy? So what do you suggest? The best way is um, by plane, by plane. It is very well connected by plane. Not that well connected, um, not by train, because trains, once you get to, I mean, once you get here, you can get here, but once you get here, there's only one, it's like a monorail around the island, so I wouldn't suggest trains in Sicily. But plane, yes, I would say plane. Any airport, Milan, or through Milan, or through Rome, mainly. Yeah, Rome, you get Rome, a lot. And Milan. there's a lot of really cheap little airlines that will connect, so don't be afraid to take things like Wizz Air. You've never okay. heard of them, but they're yeah. okay. Volatea, Ryanair. Oh, yes, EasyJet. EasyJet. Easy Jet. Um, all... Companies that have have been all open and on for years now, and they are super trusted. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm taking Transavia home. Transavia, yes, a and, Spanish a Spanish airline. Yeah, and they actually go directly to Amsterdam, mm -hmm. so you do have some direct connections. But 99% of the time, you're going to have to connect through uh, Italy. The other choice, which I've done before and I loved, is I took the overnight train from Rome. Oh yeah, that's fun. That's so <laughs> that's fun. fun. And I paid to get like the first class cabin, yeah. which I, I would definitely recommend because just think of it this way, what would you have spent on a hotel and your plane yeah. ticket? And for, it's about the same, probably 110, yes. 150 yeah, it's euro. fun, yeah. Yeah. In the morning, there is the waiter that brings you the a cappuccino, no, not cappuccino, the fruit juice and water and yeah, the, comes in. It's fun, it's yeah. kind of an old fashioned, service <laughs> it is and when you actually when you go into your cabin you have a bathroom you have mm -hmm. a shower and the last time i did it they had prosecco waiting for me on the side table wow so well pretty classy wow. in italia look at you so um another question that we've gotten uh which i think is important to discuss is safety because i know people think of sicily and i know what you're thinking about when i say sicily <laughs> in the u.s because you watch too many movies so those of you that think about coming to sicily and you think it's way too dangerous and too scary especially for women traveling alone what would you say to a woman contemplating coming yeah. alone mm, it, it is very safe it's main it, very safe i mean everywhere um, the problem is that there are too many movies, <laughs> um, too many movies with only one topic and one main theme, which obviously, I'm not saying that it's, it, it, that there's no crime, there is, but not more than any other big city, and not as much as the big cities, um, there, there is no, um, not that much crime, and women travel alone, you, it is very safe for women to travel alone. So that, I would definitely rec recommend it. Yeah, you need to yeah. stop watching those gangster yeah. movies. Because, like, first of all, that's something from the past around here. It really is. Yeah. And, like, we're in Ragusa, and I have heard of people who live here who don't really even lock their, their door to their house. Yes, <laughs> yes. in this part of the island, yeah. it, it is still like this. Yeah. Yes, it's still, uh, there's a lot of uh, trust. People know each other. Uh, that doesn't happen in the city, in Palermo, obviously, in Catania, but they're still safe. I mean, if, uh, if you're alone, a woman can still, Palermo, women go out in the evening, they drive, I drive back home, I feel safe. So depending, obviously, where you're going, you know, if you are in the city, you're going back to the hotel, it is absolutely safe. Yeah, I, I mean, I have had very few problems even with my guests. The only thing I can think of that we've had safety-wise is that somebody was walking through Balero Market and they had a really fancy, obviously expensive necklace on and somebody just came by and went pop and pulled it off. So don't bring flashy jewelry, but that's just good sense anyway. You have to be cautious. Yeah, you just, uh, it's a question of responsibility. That, that would happen anywhere. It could, yeah. yeah. So just also be really careful about your personal belongings. I always carry a crossbody bag and have my hand on it, and I've got my money and my passport in there. I've never, ever felt threatened. I have to say, I'm. this is why I have Juicy here, because I am six foot two. <laughs> Nothing really bothers me, you know? <laughs> so I have to have get another woman's opinions. <laughs> You have a natural, natural defense. <laughs> I'm terrifying. That's why nobody bothers me. <laughs> no, but that, I have to say, I have a, a lot of friends with different heights. They, they all go out, they come back home, they drive safely. 
women alone, well, only women, so that's, that's fine. I mean, I wouldn't worry about that. That's like the least thing I would worry about. I think the only place I've ever felt a little bit nervous about is um, I felt a little nervous in Catania. Because in Catania, there are some kind of bad neighborhoods, mm -hmm. even during the day that I wouldn't really go into. So that's the only place that I would say stick to kind of the main tourist track. Mm -hmm. Stick to Via Etnea, stick to Piazza Duomo, and you're going to be fine. But that is my... Don't you, I mean, what yeah, do you that's, a that? that's a must. I mean, you have to stay in the center. But also because you could get lost, you, you may need help, and so you, you, wanna, you don't want to look for help or directions. And if you stay in the center, there's no problem at all. Yeah, exactly. So we have a question that just came in here. If you have only two days in Sicily, what two places would you go? Oh, so this is, okay, so I will answer this question because I love Jerry Kurt who's watching. You know I love you. But I will say for a lot of people, um, they think they can come down to Sicily for a day because, mm -hmm. hey, it's not that far, is it? It's pretty far, and this is the largest island in the Mediterranean. How long does it take to drive from end to end? From end to end? That Trapani mean, from to Trapani Catania. to Catania, that would be four hours? Maybe? Yeah. Four, four hours. hours of driving at freeway speed. So you're talking about a really big place. Um, so it's, if you only had two days, I have an, I know what I would say. You tell me, what would you say if somebody only had two days? If you have only two days, you have to pick. You have to study a little bit and pick what you want to see. If you want to see one city, I would see one city. I wouldn't move from one city because if you only have two days, you want to spend the day, see, uh, I would obviously say Palermo because that's where I live, but it could be anything. If you, if you want to see the, um, the Greek part, you would go to Syracuse and, um, and see that part. Um, but I would pick one thing and see it and enjoy that day, that night, and that pasta. You, yeah. can't, you can't tour. No tour. I would probably say Palermo or Catania. And Catania, I mean, is maybe not your first choice of things to see, but it's got a great airport. So I would do something that, and that's why Palermo is probably the obvious choice if you only had two days, I would say. Yeah. Palermo. Palermo, that would be the only, and see Palermo and Monreale, and that's, that was yeah, that's mainly the, the plan. You can't travel, you can't tour, just yeah. stay in one place. So you take the plane, stay here one day, one night, the next day you leave, but you see one city. Yeah, I would kind of say generally if you're looking at a minimum number of days, personally, I would say it has to be at least four or five. At least four, yeah, yeah at least days. four. Yeah, I mean, I know that it seems like that's a lot of time to dedicate to a single region of Italy, especially when people think about spending a day or two in Rome, when Rome could take your whole life to see. But you're, you're going to put a lot of effort into coming down here. It's effort, right? But, um, yes, obviously you said that it could, it's a lot of effort for one region, but Sicily is not only one region. No. Sicily is, it, it, it's a world of its own. It has so much to see, there's so many things, and I have heard many people coming here with the idea of doing like a three-day tour, and they leave like, oh, I have to come back, because nobody imagines, I mean nobody, nobody who has never been here and who don't, doesn't know the history of Sicily, they do not expect all this culture and all this history, and all these sites, so that is, you have to look, look up and you have to choose, you have to pick before you, you come, when you plan your tour. Yeah, it's, it is hard to make a selection. And you know that's why I've come up with two separate tours because there's so many different aspects. I could come up with five or six different itineraries, even just right now on the spot, because are you here to see history? Are you here to eat food? Are you here to check out wine? We have three really excellent wine regions in Sicily. Each of them could stand alone anywhere else in Italy as being an excellent wine region. Like we have so many different aspects that you can see. Um, hiking, if you're into hiking, they have that here. I'm not really a hiker, so you're gonna have to ask her about that, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, there, there are two big parks big places to hike, but, uh, and then uh, th there's another thing that lately has been brought up is the, the walks that are, um, the walks through Sicily, like the Santiago walk, you know, in Spain. Now they, they have 
um, restored some paths and the, for those who like hiking. And there's a very nice hiking tour in the Agati Islands. Really? Oh yes, that, and I think it's going, that is in May. Oh, I didn't do that. In May, yes, they, they hike through the um, Levenso, Marettimo and Favignana. Wow. Yes, it's a three day hiking. Yes. That would be super yeah. duper cool. I would love to do that. So any other things that we should address for people? Um, they just have to choose a date, choose a date. <laughs> <laughs> time of year, year, when is the best time that you want to come and we will be very happy to welcome you. I, would, I will also give a little plug to Cicely for this. If you're a budget traveler, this is actually a very, very um, reasonable place to, um, to come and stay because the hotels, you know, this beautiful hotel we're staying in tonight, the rooms are around $75. $75 at a really nice four-star hotel. Uh, we're gonna go eat dinner later and a pizza dinner with um, a bottle of wine will probably be under 20 euros a person. So it, I don't know where you could do this in the US. I don't think I could anywhere you could do this. No, I don't even price. in other places in, in Italy, I mean, in the North, um, you can find places like this with this budget in Naples and Calabria, obviously, but not in the North. No. no. Yeah, so this is actually quite a bargain. So if you're if you're looking for a really good budget place, I mean, a lot of people go to Greece because Greece is also a pretty good budget place, but I'm going to tell you a secret. Greece is very cool, but the food is better here. Oh, there's much more variety. There's a bigger variety of food. By the way, there was a question about food, recommendations mm -hmm. of food. Uh, food is everywhere. If there's nothing, if there's something that is not, never missing, it is food. You have a big selection, big choice, street food, restaurant, trattoria for all budgets. So that is really nothing that, you know, there's not one particular um, place. Every read, every province has its own typical food. Um, we have the street food, which is the same all over the island, but every city, every uh, province has something typical. So that's really, again, it depends on where you want to go and what you want to see. Yeah, and the food here, I, the first time I came here, I was a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of seafood, because I'm not a super big fishy person. I've kind of learned to love the seafood, um, but if you're not into seafood, it's okay. There's plenty of other things, well, but you might learn to love the seafood, mm -hmm. actually. She and I had lunch the other day, and we had um, uh, Ricci, how do you say it? Ricci. Uh, or, or urchin, urchin, urchin. 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 We had sea urchin pasta. Um, we also had black squidding pasta. We had octopus salad. And let me tell you, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have touched any of those things. <laughs> but Sicily has taught me to have an open mind because the seafood here is extremely fresh. And because of that, it doesn't have and any, tasty. It's so tasty. And the things that I, I think I don't like the fishy taste. And a lot of times the fishy taste comes from food that is not fresh. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Bad connection. Yeah. Anyway, well, that's what we say. That if you if you smell the fish, or if you if you smell the fish, that means that it's not fresh. Yeah. That's what we the, the way that we pick our fish, or when we eat fish, or we buy the fish. So um, it's, you you don't smell the fish, you don't taste the fish, but it's just good. It has that 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 taste that it's mm -hmm. unique. Yeah, so you're gonna eat well here no matter what you do. Um, it, whether you like meat or vegetables or fish, there's always something to eat at every price point as well. Like here in Ragusa, there's a Michelin star restaurant with a celebrity chef and that's like 180 euros a person per, for a meal, which would be quite an experience mm -hmm. actually. That's where we should go, Juicy. What yeah. Are we, we should do that tonight. Um, that's an idea. Yeah, and then there's other places where you can sit at a really homey place. I had a really, really nice salad the other day, huge salad for seven euros. I, there are places here that have pastas that are five and six euros. So. You can go everywhere, everywhere, anywhere. And let me say that uh, there's a big selection selection of vegetarian food. We are naturally vegetarian. We, we do eat a lot of meat and, and a lot of fish, but we, we eat a lot of vegetables. There is a big selection of frittatas and uh, chickpeas. We do a lot of food with chickpeas, with, with beans, with lentils, and all sorts of vegetables. So. Also for those who are vegetarians, they, they will find a big selection of food. Yeah. And street food as well. 
Vegetarians, also, if you are gluten intolerant, don't oh, yes. worry. You oh, can yes. actually find pasta here that is not has no gluten. There's a lot of options, so don't let any kind of food restriction keep you from coming here because yeah. it can always be accommodated, especially like if you're on a tour with, with us, we are always able uh, to accommodate special diets. So no problem. No problem at all. Yeah, so um, Juzy has an interesting story. Just wanna tell you a little <laughs> bit about her. She is, as you can tell, speaks English with an absolutely perfect New York oh, accent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, she sounds like she sounds like she just got out of a taxi cab in Times Square. Wow, wow. She I did. wish. I wish it was true. <laughs> no, it's true. So, um, and that's super cool and very rare that to find somebody who's a native Sicilian who speaks with such a perfect, I mean, absolutely perfect English. I'm but bilingual. Tell us how that happened. Why are you bilingual? I I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Surprise, surprise. Not in New York. I, I, I studied in New York and lived for many years in New York, but um, I moved to the United States when I was four years old with my family and lived there until I was 16 and then came back to Italy. So that was, that's that's why. My, my first language was, I, I learned, the first language was English. I mean, learned in school because at home we, my parents spoke Italian. So I am bilingual um, since the age of four years old. That's, that's how it happened. And I'm a teacher, I teach English here, so I've always had the contact with the language and I've always developed and I always practice the language. So I speak most of my, my, my life I speak English and, and Italian. So my bilingualism, that's, that's me. And I have to tell you that she, I keep telling her this and she thinks I'm exaggerating. She is a jewel. Like, you are exaggerating. I'm not. I'm not. She is a you rare are. find and we are so lucky to have her. So if you are interested in traveling uh, to Sicily with I us, this, job. Yeah. this next year, if you're going to be traveling to Sicily with, uh, with me, you're going to be in 2025 with my friend Juicy. She's amazing. So we have a question just popped up. How many people do you typically have on your Sicily tour? Uh, let's see. Growing up, we would go to Balestrate, a beach town in Palermo province, mm -hmm. but I'm in Texas now. Do you know that, that yes. beach town? Yes, Balestrate is in, it's right in the middle of that gulf as I, I, that I mentioned, the Gulf of Castellamare. Ah. It's right in the middle. Balestrate is one of the biggest beaches of the gulf, actually. Yeah. It's between Trapeto that has um, also, it's a beautiful fisherman village. Uh, Trapeto and Balestrata as well. Balestrata is bigger than Trapeto, but there are fishermen villages. Very so that nice. Is, it's on, on the way to uh, Castellamare, Erice, Trapani. Uh, yeah, that's a very cool, Northwest. cool area. Yeah. So the question of how many people do we typically have on our tours? So our tours um, are a minimum of six people and they max out at about 14 to 16 people. This particular tour I have right now, which is a sold out tour, we have 14 guests on this tour. I don't want to go over that because then we have trouble getting into cool restaurants. Mm -hmm. We can't stay in these really neat little hotels. So that's why we keep it small and fun. And I just think it's better. Life is better with a small group. I yeah, think. it is. It, yeah. It's easier, definitely easier and, uh, and yeah. more fun. And the other thing we do, because I, as I'm, I mean, I've been in this job 25 years and I am so tired of staying in hotels that are not great. So we have all really nice hotels. Because I like nice hotels, because you know what? Like everybody's happier when they're staying in a hotel that they feel comfortable and safe in. So uh, we stay in some really beautiful places uh, in each of our towns. I was telling Juicy she's gonna be going to uh, the hotel tomorrow in Marsala. It's I've never so been there. Pretty. Yeah, so we have nice hotels. Our groups are really small. The food is excellent. I always say never trust a skinny tour guide, right? Because, <laughs> you know, we know our food, we like our food, we like our wine. Uh, today we did a cooking class and we made homemade pasta. We had a really lovely countryside lunch. So this is the kind of stuff we like to do. And my theory, Juicy, is that the most important thing to know about Sicily is that food is love. It is, it, it definitely, it is. And it still is, all those traditions that that's probably the, one of the um, truest um, things that you see on television still, you know, those, the food, family, the, the, the Sundays, that resists. That's one of the traditions that still resists. Recipes and eating. Sometimes we say it's love, but it's also like a passion. It's not only love, passion. It's also a fixation that we have. 
food is really um, a big thing. Yes, quality food especially. Our driver the other day was on the phone and he was, he was talking and he was gesturing and he was so wound up about something and my group was like, what's going on with the driver? Is he okay? And I said, yeah, he's having a conversation with a colleague who wants to go and get coffee at McDonald's and he's mad because he says he, that's terrible and here's the best <laughs> cafe in the place you're at because you need a Philly cafe. Don't you dare drink something else. And they're having this very heated conversation that we, we would have sworn was an argument, but they were talking about, about coffee. coffee. <laughs> and then he, that wasn't enough. He goes on to continue with his colleague. And while you're at it, you need to go find the, this shop that sells the best granita. And it was just really funny because we were all just sure yeah. they were having an argument. But no, they're talking about food. No, but this is so true. And big arguments over recipes. Who makes the best caponata? No, I, I put this, I put that. And my mother with her sister-in-law on the phone <clears throat> arguing over the pasta with the, uh, with the eggplants, Alan Orma, who makes it better and what makes it <laughs> So it's always, these are conversations, daily conversations, yeah. very common. Yeah, so this is this is a place where food is, is really the centerpiece. I, I swear to you one day I'm going to write a book about all of my adventures in Sicily and I'm going to call it Food is Love because I think that's <laughs> so true. very, very um, true. Let me just see if there's any other questions. I swear I thought I saw one. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, we're going to be here for another minute. We can answer your questions. But if, if you didn't hear a question answered and we, we didn't get to you, please go ahead and put any questions into the comments section on this video, whether that's on Facebook or on YouTube and we will get back to you uh, with uh, uh, an answer. You can also find a lot of information about Sicily on my website which is adventureswithsarah.net and you know, y'all know I wrote a book about Sicily too. I wrote the Rick Steves guidebook uh, so there's lots and lots of information in that book as well. So lots of good ways to learn about Sicily which I think for me mm -hmm. is the most beautiful destination in the world really. Mm -hmm. Definitely in Europe. Certainly in Italy. Well, uh, I, I can't say. So, I mean, I live here. That's where I chose to live. So, obviously, to me, it's just, I confirm. I confirm. We do so. have one, one little question that popped up. Do you hear a lot of Sicilian dialects? Well, you, you hear them, but um, I mean, I, can, I understand the dialect, but I can't speak it. You, you do especially in the south, not in the cities, if you go to, in the villages, yes, there are, um, people speak dialect. Luckily, I have to say, because it's a nice tradition, um, but young people don't speak it anymore. You, you will hear older people speak it, and dialects are different from Catania, from Palermo, Trapani, again, all the provinces have different, they, they do understand uh, one another, but um, they, they're, some words are completely different, yes. But yeah. you do hear them, yes. Yeah, you do hear Sicilian. I'm surprised you don't hear, you don't speak Sicilian. I guess because you're in the U.S. No, well, not also. We, we it depends on the families. Not everybody speaks dialect at home. Oh, okay. no. The older people did. I mean, my grandmother would speak dialect with her cousin on the phone. I would, I would hear her speak, yeah. but then she would speak Italian to me, and I would speak back if I spoke Italian. Uh, so it's not that common to speak Italian uh, to speak dialect. Yeah, and they're actually really trying to resurrect um, the dialect and have it actually considered a language. So yeah. that's something that's happening yeah. here. It's, uh, they're really trying to make sure yeah. the kids here yeah. don't let that die. So it's a really big part of their culture. It is. It's part of the cultural identity we connect. Which, by the way, um, one thing to know about Sicily, if you didn't catch on so far, Sicily is completely different than Italy. So if you think you've been to Italy, I don't, know, I don't need to go to Sicily, I've been to Italy. Mm -mm. No, no. As a matter of fact, we like to say that we are Sicilians, not Italian. But first, before saying Italians, you say we are Sicilians. Yeah. Yeah. Sicily is different. Definitely different. Yeah. I mean, even from the point of view, it's just actually ethnically different. The people oh, yes. here are not yes. the same makeup yeah. as people you find in Florence. No. They're just a different kind of, it's just different bloodlines, mm -hmm. different cultural aspects. So. You need to come down here, you need to see it for yourself. It's the cultural melting pot of the Mediterranean. Great food, fantastic people. <laughs> fantastic people. <laughs> You'll find both of us here. <laughs>
so I think that that, I hope that answered a lot of your questions. Uh, if it didn't, like I said, please leave, drop a comment in the comment section and we'll get to you. But you all know that Sicily is one of my great passions and I would love to invite you to come here, whether that's with us, with Juzi and I, or whether that's on your own. Uh, we are always here to help. We also do travel consultations. So if you are interested in coming, Juzi or I can actually help you plan your trip. Uh, so great pleasure. Let us know what we can do for you. We really want you to come because I think this island is one of the the most. Uh, it's the best kept secret. Yeah, it's a must see actually. Yeah. Yes, it's a must see, but it's not. It hasn't been on people's lists up to now. I know now that White Lotus was on, people are thinking about it, but mm -hmm. before it wasn't. So. We, we'd like to invite you to Sicily. So thank you so much, Juicy. Thank you. Thank I'm you. So glad to have you here. And now it's time for... It's a pleasure to be here. It's time for a spritz, you know that? Oh, yes, right. You're it's, just in time. It's spritz o'clock. So we got to go. We got to scoot. It's spritz o'clock. We have things to go. <laughs> we have things to do. So we'll see you all again soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 See you.